Praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord in prayer. God himself, in his love, goodness, will enrich your soul and bless your soul and make you have a great understanding of his word so that his word will be profitable to you, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for this day of worship. Thank you for your presence, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, because we know you brought us together so that you can shower your blessings upon our lives. We pray, Lord, you'll pour your blessings from on high upon every soul in Jesus' name. We pray that, Lord, those who have come here wanting to know you but have not known you yet, that you reveal yourself to them and you help them to have a definite knowledge of salvation in Christ in Jesus' name. And for those of us who have known you, saved, born again, having eternal life, Lord, we pray that holiness of life and sanctification, which is so essential and central in your truth and revelation, you grant to all the believers in Jesus' name. And for saved, sanctified souls, you told us that you receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon us, they will be witnesses unto you. In Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the eternal part of the earth. We pray, Lord, you pour your spirit upon every waiting, sanctified, holy child of God in Jesus' name. Make us fruitful in the kingdom of God. And all that we need to make us do your will, grant to everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can see now. We're looking at uh, this uh, word now. I'm looking at G Genesis chapter 26, verses 12, 13, and 14. Genesis chapter 26. We're looking at verses 12, 13, and 14. Then I seek sword in the land and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, and he went forward, and he grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks, and possession of herds, and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. I want to look at those verses of scripture, because I believe that this year is going to be a fruitful year. And I want you to look at this and talk about an exceedingly fruitful year for Abraham's seed. An exceedingly fruitful year for Abraham's seed. You'll find in a passage I've read, I read about Isaac. And he was that seed of Abraham that the Lord had given the blessing to. He gave him the promise and prophesied upon his life. And then he became not the only, not the only seed, but the first. And then the rest of us following, we are also of Abraham. To tell you about that, let's come to the New Testament, Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 26 all through to verse 29. So you will see the position of a child of God today, the position of somebody who is saved, born again, cleansed, converted, and living a righteous life by the grace of God. The believers who are saved and sanctified with the damnic nature of rooted, and then they have this new life within and all around them. Those believers who have gotten the privilege of being filled with the Holy Ghost, the special situation and the special place the Lord has given us saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Galatians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 26. It says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ are put on Christ. 
there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. You see that? We have repented of our sins. We came to the Lord and we came to Calvary and the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed us. He made the atonement for us and now we're new creatures in Christ. And it says because we belong to Christ, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That, that he is worth the promise of the Lord and will become inheritors of those uh, promises of the Lord. Galatians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 28. Galatians chapter 4, verse 28, it says, For we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. He's comparing us now with Isaac, and he says, For we brethren, as Isaac was, we are the children of God. Which means, as Isaac was Abraham's seed, you and I, if we are born again, we and you and I, if we have the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing us and washing us and purging us, purifying us, you and I, if we have tasted of Calvary, not only the first time, the second work of grace as well, sanctified and purified, if we have tasted of Calvary, it says, We too, as Isaac was, we are the children of God and the children of promise and of the seed of Abraham. I'm looking at Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. We're looking at verse 6. Romans chapter 9. We're looking at verse 6. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. It's not telling us there are some people who are nominal. They are superficial. It's saying it is not all of Israel. That is Israel. It's telling us, look at verse 7. Neither because are they the seed of Abraham, uh, are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. It's saying that Isaac occupied a special place, a unique place. A peculiar place and if you are born again if you have been washed by the blood of the lamb and, the, and you become a new creature in Christ you're special you're unique you're peculiar you're not like all the other people that just go to church and they're just nominal people they do not have salvation they are not born again they don't know what it means to be a real child of God he said but in case of Isaac Isaac was different and we are different I said we're different Look at verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. They which were the children of the flesh, that is, they were born naturally by Abraham. But they were not the children of promise. It says, but I seek is them, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed accounted for the seed which means then we if we are born again we if we are sanctified we if we belong to the lord and we are abiding in the lord we have abraham's seed and as god blessed isaac is going to bless all his children i'm coming back to genesis now chapter 26 an exceedingly fruitful year for abraham's seed Abraham said, we're looking at Genesis chapter 26 again. I'm reading from verse 12 like I read before. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year, how much? An hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. That's what we're looking for this year. An hundredfold, abundance upon our lives. Because we are Abraham's seed and because he has given us the promise, he says this is what he's going to do. And then he has started doing it for Isaac and he says, what I've done for him, I'm going to do for all that belong to me. Look at verse 13. And the man works great, that greatness will come upon you. And went forward, you will go forward, not backward. And grew until he became very great. Can you see it was great Then he went forward and became very great. And I'm believing God that you, this year, something is going to happen. At the end of the year, we will, I will have a story to tell. 
and you will have a story to tell of the goodness of the Lord and the multiplication of the blessings of God upon our lives in Jesus' name. He was great. He went forward and then he became very great. He was put in for he had possession of flocks. You'll have possession. And the possession of hers and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. The Philistines said, they know, but you know, they still envied him because that man was really very great. The Lord is doing great things. There are three things we're going to consider today. Number one, the promised fruitfulness for the favored seed. The promised fruitfulness for the favored seed. Number two, the plenteous fruits of fruitful sowers. When you sow, like Abraham, like Isaac sowed, he wasn't lazy, he was hard working, he was industrious, he sowed in the land. And then the Lord gave him a hundredfold the plenteous fruits of fruitful sowers. Number three, the precious fruits of faithful saints. The precious fruits of faithful saints. Number one, the promised fruitfulness for favored for the favored seed. I want you to look at uh, the calling of of the calling of Isaac and see how God favored him. And from this day on, you are favored in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. Let us look at it from verse 6. Talking about this Isaac. The calling of God upon his life. And how God even mentioned his name. And then he said, I'm waiting for him. He's coming. He'll come through Sarah. And when he comes, I will favor him. And you have come into the kingdom at such a time like this. And the favor of God will be upon your life. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And the king shall come out of thine, out of thee. And then it says, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. That's the favor that God showed Abraham and Isaac. And he said, I'm going to give you a son. Never mind that you're getting much, much older. And Sarah is also getting much, much older. All the same, a seed is going to come. And my favor, my covenant, my blessing will be upon you, Abraham, and will be upon thy seed as well. After thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. That means then, as God was talking about Abraham, he was talking about the seed as well. And I was talking about the blessing he was going to give unto this Abraham. He was going to give to the seed as well. Look at verse 8. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Do you see that when God mentioned Abraham, every time he mentioned the seed, he mentioned the seed. He said, my favor is not only upon you. My favor is upon you. My favor is upon the seed as well. Your seed after you, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. He is our God. I want you to look at chapter 28 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 28. And you'll see when God famous people, he talks to them. He reassures them. He gives them his promises. And we know that he is a covenant keeping God, a faithful God, a God who cannot fail. And when he gives a promise to a seed, that, that seed should be expecting that blessing of the Lord and should accept that this is going to be fulfilled, is going to do it in Jesus' name. Chapter 28, verse 3, it says, And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And that's the blessing of the Lord upon the seed. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 3 and 4. Jeremiah chapter 23. I read from verse 3. Here is what the Lord is promising those who belong to him, those who are the children of God, and those who are the seed of Abraham, were favored, were blessed, and because of that favor and blessing, he pronounces the blessings upon our lives. Verse 3 of Jeremiah chapter 23. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes, and 
they shall be what? Fruitful and increase. We are going to be fruitful. And then he says, when I bring them together, this is what I'm going to do. Look at verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. It says, there will be no lack in our lives. It says, because I'm blessing them, and because I'm favoring them, there's not going to be any lack, there's not going to be any fear, no anxiety, because all my promises will be yes and amen in their lives. Colossians chapter 1, fruitfulness, fruitfulness. That's what the Lord has promised to those he favors, and those he has called, those who are converted, those who are born again, those who are living in the life of actually belonging to the Lord. They are abiding in the grace of God. And because they are abiding in that grace, it says, this is my blessing for them. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, fruitfulness, that she might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. I need to come back to that Genesis chapter 26. Let me show you something there. Because many times if you do not understand who are the favored seed, who are those, the people who are called, those who are converted, those who are consecrated to the Lord, saved and sanctified and purified, the sins have been taken away. There are external sins, outward sins are taken away. And then the inner inward depravity and the inner evil, inward evil, all that has been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And now the Lord is saying, because of that special relationship that I have with them, saved and sanctified, I am going to favor them. I'm going to make them fruitful. That's why I'm coming back to this Genesis chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 12 again. Then I seek. Stop there for a moment. Then I seek. Now, if you understand the life of Isaac, then you will understand what, who a seed is. A seed of Abraham. It says, then I seek. The person we're reading about here that had a hundredfold. The person we're reading about here that God blessed. The person we're reading about here that was, that was great. The person we're reading about that went forward. The person we're reading about that even became greater, very great, and had all possessions. His name is Isaac. And that Isaac, I'm going to show you the characteristics of the life of that Isaac. I, he was incorruptible. And as he was submissive, a submissive son, that man was saved, that man was sanctified, that man was submissive. A, he was affectionate. You know, he spelled out his name by the characteristics of the seed. Affectionate, the next A is abstaining. He was abstaining from all appearance of evil. You'll see him as I read about him. And then if you want to be the blessed one and the fruitful one this year, if you want to, if you want to be the one that has a hundredfold, this year, you want to be the seed of Abraham like Isaac was. Already you know that Abraham had other children, but this blessing did not come upon all those other children. He had this child named such and such, another child named such and such. In fact, it says he had sons and daughters, but all of those people were not even given the kind of blessing they had. But now in the case of Isaac, this incorruptible man, in the same case of Isaac, this saved and submissive and sanctified man, in the case of Isaac, this affectionate man, in the case of Isaac, the abstaining man, he abstained from all appearance of evil and see, he was circumcised. I want to show you about this Isaac and I told you what is I in the name Isaac? Incorruptible. Incor Look at Genesis chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 1. Incorruptible. Yes, he lived in that community, an inhabitant in that community, but all the pollutions of that community, all the defilement of that community, all the abominations of that community did not have any impact on his life at all. I seek incorruptible. We're looking at Genesis 26 from verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac, that's our man, Isaac went down unto, went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Geram. And the Lord appeared 
appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. You see, when God wants to bless a man, he restrains that man. He restricts that man. He directs that man. He cautions that man. He says, don't go down to Egypt. There's defilement there. There's abomination there. There's idolatry there. And you ought to be the incorruptible man if you're going to be favored by me. If I'm going to count you at this special, unique, and peculiar seed of Abraham, there is one thing I want of you. You must be incorruptible do not go down to Egypt, stay in the place I will tell thee of sojourn in this land, and I will and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, and will give all and will give thee all these countries, and I will perform the oath that I have that I swear unto Abraham thy father. The Lord was saying the condition in which uh, for which I'll be able to bless you and give you all the covenant I made with Abraham is that. You will not corrupt yourself. You will not compromise with the people of the land. You must remain incorruptible. Look at verse 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. As the Lord told him, don't go down to Egypt. I've heard, sir, I will not go. Don't corrupt yourself. I've heard, I will not corrupt myself. Do not defile yourself with abominations of the land. I've heard, I will not. He was an incorruptible, a man that could not be corrupted. I pray that that will be your characteristic. But what if a person is not born again? How can it be? He'll just uh, follow after the people of the land. Whatever they do is what you will do. If you're going to be like Isaac, the Lord is saying, you must have an experience of being born again. Because if you're not born again, you'll be trying and trying and trying. And your best will fail. Your best will fail. But it is when Christ comes into you. And Christ lives inside you. Then you say, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. It is Christ that lives in me. And the life which I now live in, in the Lord, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading there from verse 9 where the Lord is telling us, if you're going to be the favored seed, that is going to be fruitful, that the Lord is going to shower his blessing upon, the number one thing in your life is that I incorruptible. Deuteronomy chapter 18, I'm reading there from verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those lands. Be incorruptible. Do not learn to do after them. Do not copy them. Do not emulate them. Don't eat what they eat or drink what they drink or dress like a dress. Don't think the way they think. And don't plan your life the way they plan their lives. Be incorruptible. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those lands. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that or that you said divin, divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, and then, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. It says, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. You see that man, he was uh, Isaac, he was incorruptible. And the Lord is saying, if I'm going to favor you, I'm going to bless you. There is one thing you need to take note in your life. Be born again, be born again. And there will be the grace of that salvation in your life. You will be incorruptible. Yes, he was submissive. Look at Genesis chapter 22. And you see, these are the kind of man that God will bless. The kind of man he'll give a hundredfold to. He was submissive. How was he submissive? Because he was saved. If somebody is not saved, he cannot be submissive because the natural man cannot obey God. He's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Before we can be submissive, we must be saved. And then when you are sanctified, that self-will is cancelled. The damned nature is crushed. And that thing, the eye within, all that is subdued. That's how that man became so submissive. The Lord circumcised and sanctified him. 
And I pray that that grace of sanctification, the Lord will grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. Because that's the name who can be totally, completely, unreservedly, be submissive unto the Lord. Genesis chapter 22. In Genesis chapter 22, I'm reading there from verse 7. Genesis chapter 22, we're reading from verse 7. And we're told him, And Isaac, that's a man, that's the seed, Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And look at verse 9. It says, And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and What's next? Tell me out loud. Bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Show me a man who is not saved. He'll push away that old man. What do you want to do? I asked you about the love for the sacrifice and told me God will provide. And here you are tying me up and wanting to burn me as a burnt offering. This, this, this Isaac was already a teenager. And that uh, Abraham was more than 100 years of age. In fact, he didn't even carry the wood. It was Isaac that carried the wood. He'll push him away. But the man was saved. The man was sanctified. All that kicking within. All that rebellion within. All the things that you say, I cannot have that. I will not have that. I want to have my way. Abraham, you will not do that to me. All that was cancelled and crushed. And this is why I see he was so blessed. And why it became so great. And when you allowed the operating hand of the Almighty God to operate on your heart. And to take away that Adamic nature. To sanctify you, purify you. And take away that inner seed that is rebelling against the will of God. Takes it away from your heart. And God says that my beloved child, beloved seed. A favored seed is saved, is submissive, is sanctified. I'm telling you multiplication will come in your life this year. But this is what the Lord is waiting for, that you allow him to really do all that he needs to do. And that's the reason why God now said in verse 15, look at verse 15, it says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said by myself, have I sworn, says the Lord, the, the, for because thou hast done this sin, and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and the Lord will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the and as the sand which is upon the seashore. The seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And then it says in verse 18, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. You see, because Isaac responded the way he responded, submissive to the Lord and saved by the Lord and sanctified by the Lord. That's the reason why God said what he said, that something great will happen. And through you, that great thing will happen too. And Isaac was affectionate, affectionate. He had love in his heart. As you look at the life of uh, Isaac from beginning to the end, for example, you never hear him say anything against Ishmael. You know, Ishmael and Hagar, they made fun of Isaac and Sarah, but you never hear a word of slander, a word of rebellion, a word of hatred or bitterness from Isaac unto Ishmael. And then you'll find that the Philistines will dig some well here. Then they'll stop the well. They say, what do you want to do? You are great already. You are very great already. And you are much greater than us. He'll quickly go to another place. There was love. No hatred. No bitterness. No rebellion. No contradiction. No criticism. And no conflict with anybody. That's the kind of person the Lord will bless. And this year you are in for blessing. Look at chapter 24. I'm reading about Isaac. Isaac, affectionate Isaac. Affectionate Isaac. That means loving. We're looking at Genesis 24, verse 67. 
Genesis 24, 67. And I said, brought her, that's the wife, into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. You see the way Isaac, he just accepted Re Rebekah and they loved her. Even sometimes Rebecca would do something that you know she shouldn't have done. Like when Isaac wanted to bless uh, Esau, and then uh, you know Rebecca was afraid that the blessing that ought to be for uh, for Jacob might go to Esau. He quickly did some things which was not right, and eventually Isaac knew about it. But you never hear a word of fighting, argument, disagreement from Isaac. He just let it go. That was the kind of person Isaac was. And the Lord is telling us the kind of people he wants us to be so that you can be the favored seed. A person that is not fighting other people, quarreling with other people, contradicting other people, arguing with other people. Why did you do that? Why didn't you do this? Why this and why that? Always fighting. He was a peaceful man. He was an affectionate man. A man whose heart was full of love. That's the reason God blessed him even when they hurt him or when they did something they shouldn't have done to him you never hear an angry word coming out of his mouth in his family oh, so some things rose up that would have torn the family apart but not Isaac Isaac could bear anything Isaac could endure anything and I pray that God will make us such husbands in Jesus name did I hear any amen from the men and the wives too. God will make us such a wives in Jesus' name. Let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Affectionate. Affectionate. And you know what makes us affectionate? If we're not saved, you cannot have love. If you're not sanctified, you cannot have this deep love when people hurt you. When people antagonize you, when people hate you, when people slander you, when people to kind of derail your plan, when you want to bless this and then they maneuver and then they change everything and it's a change that has affected the family, not for two, three years, 20 years, even beyond. But Isaac will never speak a word, an angry word. But before that can happen, there must be sanctification in our heart. And then you'll be that favored seed and God will so favor you and the blessings of God will multiply in your life affectionately. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish holy and without blemish not only that Isaac was a abstaining 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 you see the, the reason why God bless Isaac God doesn't just throw his blessings here and there to every dick and Harry the man was a favored seed. The man was incorruptible. And the man was submissive, saved, and sanctified. And the man was affectionate and abstaining. Let's look at Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. And you'll see that he will not argue with anybody and any defilement in the land. He just quietly withdrew. Genesis chapter 26, I'm reading there from verse 16. Genesis 26, verse 16. And I'll be made excited to I see, go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Because he will not copy them, he will not live like them, it was totally different. So the Lord blessed him in a special way. And then they saw that blessing, then they came to him eventually and said, get away from here. You are greater than us. You are mightier than us. And without any argument, look at verse 17. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah and dwelt there. No argument. No fighting. Just like his father, Abraham. When, I, when a lord, uh, you know, lord's arts men, look at what he did. And lord, Abraham said, you take that part. I'll take whatever remains. They abstain from any kind of confrontation or, or kind of conflict, 
fighting anybody. And that's what the Lord is expecting of you, of me, of us together, if we're expecting the blessing of favored, of the favored sin. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. If this year is going to be a fruitful year for you, you must stop all that fighting, all that quarreling, all that argument, all that this is mine, I'm going to possess this, all the grabbing and all the greed must forsake all that. Just abstain and let the blessing come directly from the Lord. And don't fight for anything. Don't fight for recognition. Don't fight for position. Let God do it by himself. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from evil. Abstain from all evil. Abstain from even all the appearance of evil. In First Peter chapter two, verse eleven. First Peter chapter two, verse eleven. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Maybe in your office, in your community. If you're a man, there'll be a woman that is, you know, trying to attach herself to you. Your wife is not here. Let's, you know, have some fun together. You abstain from all those things that war against your soul. They want to destroy your soul. You might be a woman, and as a man that's always, you know, proving nice and acting nice and always wanting to, you know, be with you and steal your love away from your husband. Abstain. Because you say, I'm going to be like favored sin, the favored sin, and favored I sin. And if you're going to be favored of the Lord, there's something that's not be in your life, you must abstain from all appearance of evil. And I come to see that means circumcised. Circumcised. You see, if he was not circumcised, all the other qualities would be nothing in the sight of God. Because God had said, any seed of Abraham that was not circumcised would be cut off. And Isaac was circumcised. And the Lord is expecting, if you are going to be that favored seed that will have a hundredfold, that will have a great testimony of possession and great blessings of multiplication, it says you must be circumcised. Genesis chapter 21, and we're looking at verse 4. Genesis chapter 21, verse 4. There are many people that are just saying, I need the blessing of Abraham. I want the blessing of Abraham. Let the blessing of Abraham come upon me. It comes upon the favored seed. And the favored seed that the people are incorruptible like Isaac. They are saved and sanctified and submissive like Isaac. They are affectionate and loving like Isaac. They are abstaining like Isaac and they are circumcised like Isaac. I'm looking at chapter 21 of Genesis verse 4. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac. Being eight days old, as God had commanded him, as God has commanded him, is the commandment of the Lord that that circumcision of heart, not just of the flesh, that circumcision of heart must take place. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm reading there from verse 6. If you want to be the favored seed, the blessed seed, the fruitful seed, the one that God will specially honor. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and read there from verse 6. And the Lord thy God will do what? Circumcise thine heart. Circumcise thine heart. Some people say they don't understand. Well, you understand when we're talking about physical, natural circumcision. Circumcise the flesh. But this one is talking about circumcising the heart and the heart of thy seed. And the heart of the seed. That's, that's it right there. He wants to circumcise the heart of the seed so that you can become the favored seed. And to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. It is that circumcision of the heart that brings that fullness of blessing. Colossians chapter 2. See the New Testament declaration about our circumcision, the circumcision of the heart. That he'll take that Adamic nature away, he'll uproot that Adamic nature, and then he says, when he does that, he'll make us to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. Every consideration of our heart will be, how does this show my love to God? How does this show my appreciation for the Lord? How does this show my affection for the Lord? 
you will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed so you can love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind Colossians chapter 2 verse 11 in Colossians chapter 2 verse 11 in whom also ye are circumcised you see that in whom also ye believers saved and sanctified purified and purged and pardoned in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in the putting of the body of sin the center of sin the origin of sin the original sin putting of the body of sins of the of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of christ the circumcision that christ himself performs i pray he will do it for you i said he will do it for you romans chapter 2 romans chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 28 romans chapter 2 circumcision of the heart and god loves it and god desires it and god demands it and this is what will make him to grant you the blessing that will bring multiplication in your life, fruitfulness in your life. Romans chapter 2, verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. God is saying, go beyond the circumcision of the flesh and go to the circumcision of the heart. Verse 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Circumcision is that which is of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. That's what God wants to do, he will do it. That's the identity of the favored seed. Incorruptible, say, I will be incorruptible. Say, I will be incorruptible. Say it again. And the man that is going to be the favored seed will be submissive and saved and sanctified. Say, I'll be saved. I am saved. I am submissive. I'll be sanctified say that aloud he was affectionate you say i will manifest affection he has the love of christ he wants in our heart to saturate our heart to fill our heart so that every action everything we do anytime any day will just manifest the love the affection of the lord say i will abstain from every appearance of evil then my heart will be circumcised. Say that again. You see, when God does that, he will do it. When God does that, then we'll become like the favored seed. There'll be fruitfulness in your life. Abundance in your life. And if the Lord says he'll pour out his blessing upon you, there'll not be enough room to receive those blessings in Jesus' name. I come to point number two, the plenteous fruits of fruitful sowers, of fruitful sowers. The people that sow, they sow abundantly, and therefore they reap abundantly. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 26, Genesis chapter 26, I'm reading there from verse 12. I seek, yes, the Lord had promised was going to bless him, but that man was not lazy. That man was not idle. That man was not just roaming about and wasting time, but he actually sowed in the land. Look at verse, look at verse 12. Genesis 26. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year. This is your year. I said, This is your year. And received in the same year and hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. He was a sower. And because he sowed, he wasn't lazy. He sowed everywhere. He was here, he sowed in that land. He was here, he sowed in that, he was here, he sowed in that land. And the Lord gave him a hundredfold. If you're going to sow like that, look at what it means. If you're going to be a real sower, 
you're not looking at difficulties and challenges you're not lazy you're not idle you're not fearful you know somebody is there he doesn't want to, to do this i'll not go there that other person is there i'm afraid of them the fear of man is going to be taken away from your heart and your life if you're going to really sow the way god wants you to sow this year i want you to look at ecclesiastes ecclesiastes chapter 11 ecclesiastes chapter 11 and see what the lord is telling us in verse 4 chapter 11 verse 4 he that observes the wind shall not sow and he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap that means that if you are going to have uh, this life of Isaac industrials, this man was really industrious, really warm. If you are going to be like him, you'll not be looking at this condition there, that condition there. They won't allow me, they will hinder me. You are going to sow every time. And when you sow, the Lord will bring a blessing upon what you sow in Jesus' name. You're not going to be the person that is giving complaint. This one is not working. That one is not working. There's no job there. There's no situation here. And there's no opportunity here. There's no privilege here. They won't allow me to do this or to do that. He that looks observeth the clouds will not sow. And he who whosoever is observing the wind, he'll not do what he ought to do. That's why the Lord is telling us in verse 1, cast thy bread upon the waters and for thou shalt find it after many days give a portion to seven and also to the to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the land if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth and it says in verse in verse in verse three and if the tree fall toward the south or toward the, toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there, shall, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, but I will sow. I said, I will sow. And he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. The Lord is saying then in verse 6, In the morning sow thy seed, in the afternoon withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not whither shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall alike be good. The Lord is saying that whatever the conditions in the land and whatever the challenges you are facing in your personal life, in your private life, make sure that you keep on walking, you keep on sowing. And when you sow, the Lord will bring abundance in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalm 126. Psalm 126. I'm reading there from verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. There are some people, if there be little pain, they won't sow. A little challenge, they won't sow. Some few tears, they won't sow. And some little sickness in their body, they won't sow anything. Or a little disagreement. A little kind of uh, threat of men. Men are threatening them. Women are threatening them. Or maybe it's a little confusion in the family. Then they just fold their hands. They won't do anything. But it says, they that sow in tears. There are times when you are paying. This is the world. There are times of persecution. This is the world. There are times when people are going to misunderstand you or misrepresent you. It says uh, the times of tears are there, the times of pain, they are there. But they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in, bringing sheaves within, within. We're going to keep on sowing, and we're going to keep on reaping. We're not going to allow whatever challenges we have in our personal lives, those little, little things to hinder us. We keep on sowing so we can keep on reaping. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. There are some people, they sow according to their fluctuating emotions. When they are happy, they sow abundantly. And when they are not happy, somebody has done something they don't appreciate, has said something they don't appreciate. And somebody has acted or reacted to them in a way they don't appreciate. Then they sow sparingly. You are not hurting the person who is offending you. You are hurting yourself. 
It's like the students saying, I'm not going to read that subject because I don't like the teacher. Hey, you are not hurting the teacher. You are hurting yourself. I'm not going to eat that food because I don't like the person who has cooked it. You are not hurting the cook. You are hurting yourself. I'm not going to obey the Bible because I don't like the preacher. You are hurting yourself because if you don't obey the word of God, you will not go to heaven. I will not go to heaven because I don't like the person that is telling me about heaven. I'm not going to prepare for the rapture. I don't like the preacher who is talking about the uh, rapture. You are hurting yourself. You are not hurting the preacher. And so, when you are happy, so... When you are not happy, so. When you like the people, so. When you don't like the people, so. Whatever it is, so abundantly. Look at that verse again. And don't keep on cheating yourself. And don't keep on hurting yourself. Thinking you are hurting anybody. I'm going to keep on sowing this year. I said I'm going to keep on sowing this year. Times of tears and times of joy. Times of pain and times of pleasure. Times of in season and out of season. That's what the Lord is saying. Sow the word and sow what you need to sow so that you have abundance in your life in Jesus' name. Because the Lord has given us this year as a year of fruitfulness, a year of abundance, a year of multiplication. And the multiplication will be upon your life in Jesus' name. What if I said, I'm not going to say, but what if I said, do you know that your blessing will be according to your amen? Praise the Lord. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I just said, you know, what if God will say? What if God will say that, you know, he, he puts a blessing upon your life and then he's going to measure the amen. And if you say amen, it's okay, I'll give that to you. Then if you say amen, then he gives that to you. Your blessing will be upon that this year in Jesus' name. Okay. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say. He which soweth sparingly shall also reap also sparingly. And then he which soweth abundantly, bountifully, shall also reap bountifully. This year, you are going to say abundantly. Yeah. And when you sow abundantly and bountifully, the Lord will bring that bountiful blessing upon your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're, looking, we're looking at this now in the word of God in this psalm. In Psalm 1. Psalm 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 1. Reading from verse 1. You see the Lord is showing us how to be the favored seed and the fruitful seed. How to do what we ought to do so that the blessings of God will be abundant upon our lives. In uh, Psalm 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Blessed is the man. I am this man. You are this woman too. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, when you are facing some challenges in your life, there are some people that will be coming, they will be counseling you, advising you, if I were you, this is how I will do. Well, thank God I'm not you and you are not me. Other people will say, you know, if I were in this condition, in this situation, this is the way I'm going to react. Well, that's, don't come to me. I'm not going to abide in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man. And blessed is the woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. It is Lord to see meditate day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever I do this year, I'm going to prosper. Say it for yourself. Whatever I do this year, I'm going to prosper. I go to the right, I prosper. I move to the left, I prosper. I go to the front, I prosper. I turn around and prosper. Anywhere I go, everywhere I go, whatever I do, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I will prosper this year. In the presence of my enemies, I will prosper. In the church, I will prosper. On the street, I will prosper. Anywhere I go, I will prosper. When I stand up and pray, I will prosper. When I stand up and preach, I will prosper. 
whatever I lay my hands to do this year, I will prosper. You will prosper in Jesus' name. You see, that's what the blessings of the Lord has declared. And that blessing will be upon your life. You accept it and it is yours. I said you accept it and it is yours. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. I'm reading from verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. He shall not be afraid of what? Evil tidings. That's one point that will not go out because they are having some evil tidings. They are afraid. This year all fear is gone. Our youths will not be afraid. Our adults will not be afraid. Our men will not be afraid. Our women will not be afraid. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees desire upon his enemies. He, he has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Who am I talking about? God bless you and confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 30. Proverbs 11 verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. You are the wise soul winner. And the Lord will bless his work in your hand. I'm looking at this now in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, a year of fruitfulness, a year of blessing. Malachi chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3, we're reading from verse 10. Malachi 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes. How much of the tithes? All the tithes, all the tithes. Tithes of money, the tithes of your time, the tithes of your skill. The tides of your ability. The tides of everything you have. Everything you possess. Bring all the tides into the storehouse. You know, if you know, if you know how to do something and you see other people doing it, say, they're not doing it well. Come on, come and join us and do it with us. They're singing. They're not singing. Come on, come and join us and sing with us. They're preaching. They're not preaching where well, you know how to preach. That's why you close the preaching. Come on and join us and, and contribute your part. They're planting churches. They could have done it this way and that way. Don't just stand there and preach. Come and join us and do it with us. And bring a tenth of your ability. A tenth of your skill. And bring a tenth of your learning. A tenth of your training. A tenth of all your experience. A tenth of your money. A tenth of everything you've got. If you know how to do it, why don't you just sit down there and say, they're not doing it well? If you come to us, you do it with us, you will help us, we'll do it better. That's why it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And amen. amen. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And ye shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delight. Some land, says the Lord of hosts. This is your year. Point number three, the precious fruits of faithful saints. The precious fruits of of faithful saints. Faithful saints. What's the precious fruit of the faithful saints? Saved, sanctified, pardoned, purified, purged, circumcised, and converted. What's the fruit of such saints? Faithful saints. We're coming back to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, 
the fruits, precious fruits, the precious fruits. When you are saved, you begin to bear fruit. When you are sanctified, you begin to bear much more fruit. That's why Jesus said in chapter 15 of John that he'll purge us, he'll sanctify or purify us, circumcise us, that we may bear much more fruit. We're looking at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading there from verse 22. Galatians 5, 22. About the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. You know, we don't bear fruit when we go about as if somebody has, you know, taking all the joy away from us and we're frowning and we're morose and such and our jaws drop. That one has no Christianity. Joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And whatever you do, you do it happily. You do it joyfully. And then it says peace. Or not, you know, going about and say we don't have peace in our heart and peace in our mind and peace in our homes and peace in our church and peace in our surrounding. Go about as a peace lover, as a peacemaker. That's the fruit, the precious fruit of faithful saints and long suffering not that's not the people who are suffering and complaining who are telling you do you know what i'm going to throw in my district about my district uh, pastor about my group pastor do you know what they have done to me do you know this cheer up long suffering means you are quiet to suffer in silence and you commit whatever you are going through you commit it to the lord don't tell me what you are in tell me what christ has brought you into and stop talking about you know they are doing this they are doing this to me they never love me they never appreciate me see what i've done see how they are responding to me long suffering and then it goes on to say in that verse 22 and gentleness and goodness and faith and then meekness and temperance against such there is no law that fruit will come out in our lives this year in jesus name in ephesians chapter 5 verse 9 ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 9 ephesians 5 verse 9 it says for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth truthfulness this year there's no deception this year there's no lying this year there's there's no hypocrisy just truth and righteousness and uh, goodness it tells us in um, james chapter 3 james chapter 3 verse 17 verse 18 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure there's some people that have wisdom from beneath wisdom from satan Wisdom from society, wisdom from the world, the cleverness of the people of the world. You want to get from the people who offended them what Shakespeare called a pound of flesh. You want to retaliate. And they try to maneuver their ways and try to maneuver to get some wisdom, cleverness, so they can retaliate. That one is the wisdom of the, of the devil. But it says, the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, for the fruit and the fruit of righteousness. See that? Righteousness is a fruit. Restitution is a fruit. That's why John the Baptist told those people, bring forth therefore the fruits, meet for repentance. There's righteousness there. There's right standing there. There's uprightness there. There's restitution there. That's why it says in that verse 18, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. I pray God will demonstrate in our lives. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Look at here from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, it, with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, 
let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually that is the fruit of our lips the fruit of our lips when you give praise to God the fruit of our lips when you show gratitude to God the fruit of our lips when you preach his word you encourage other people counsel other people draw other people near to the Lord and tell them don't be discouraged don't be discouraged just keep on marching on enjoy a little bit more when we do that the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name I'm looking at um, first Peter chapter 3 the fruit of our lips the fruit of our lips they will talk to other people encourage other people lighten or brighten the lives of other people first Peter chapter 3 verse 8 finally be all of one mind having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be, cu be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing. That's the fruit of our lives. You are blessing people, you are blessing the Lord as well, knowing that ye are therefore thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew or shun evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it, ensure it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But, tell me, Say it loud, but say that again, but for the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I pray you'll not attract the frown and the wrath and the judgment of the Lord against your life in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6 fruit, precious fruit of faithful saints. Romans chapter 6, verse 22. But now be made free from sin. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Be made free from sin. You became servants to God. And you have your fruits unto holiness and the end everlasting life. The Lord has declared for us today, as he has been doing from the beginning of this year, that this is going to be a fruitful year, an exceedingly fruitful year for Abraham's seed. And thank God, I am Abraham's seed. I say, thank God, I'm Abraham's seed. I will remain incorruptible. I will remain submissive. I will be sanctified. I will remain saved. I will not backslide. I will be affectionate. I have love in my heart. I will abstain from all appearance of evil. I remain circumcised, consecrated, committed to the Lord. I'm expecting that this year, I expect that this year, there will be a hundredfold in my life. On a fold in my family. On a fold in the ministry. On a fold in our church. And when the time comes to celebrate the blessings of the Lord, I have a testimony. Rise up and tell the Lord. This is your year. This is your year. Don't let anything take what you have away from you. This is your year of blessing. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. The blessings of the Lord for you this year. The goodness of the Lord for you this year. You are that seed of Abraham. The fabled seed. The chosen seed. The Lord has called you and you have responded. You tell the Lord, 
Thank you, Jesus. You have chosen me. You have called me. You have converted me. You have changed my life. You have turned my life around. Grant me your grace. Grant me your grace. So that I will be incorruptible. The abominations of the land will not corrupt you. The defilement in the land will not corrupt you. The practices of the heathen will not corrupt you. Incorruptible seed. Saved. Sanctified. Holy. Pure. Righteous. Incorruptible. Submissive. Submissive to the word. Submissive to the Lord. Sanctified. Heart sanctified. The spirit, your soul sanctified. Sanctified action. Sanctified thoughts. Sanctified mind. Sanctified will. Saved. Sanctified. Submissive. You bend the knee before the Lord. You yield and submit to the will and the word of the Lord. Affectionate. Loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Affectionate. Loving Christ who died for you and paid such a great price for your redemption. Loving his word, loving his work, loving his ministry, loving his calling, loving the great commission. You love the Lord, affectionate. Loving your brother, as Christ has loved you. Loving your wife, loving your husband, loving your children. As Christ has loved you. Affectionate. No hatred. No bitterness. No grudges. No envy, no jealousy, no argument, no fighting, affectionate, abstaining, abstaining from all evil at home and in church, in the office, on the road. In the bus, in the plane, on the train, anywhere. Abstaining from all evil, morning, afternoon, night. Abstain from all evil. Your past sins that are forgiven, totally cancelled. Now bringing them back again. Abstaining from the evil of hypocrisy. Abstaining from the evil 
that is so common and prevalent in society be different like I seek circumcised 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 in heart so you can love God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and the Lord has said as you present yourself to the Lord today and this year every day As that seed of Abraham, as such a seed of Abraham, he has promised that he'll grant you this year a hundredfold. So the seed. So bountifully. Then this year, you reap bountifully.